so it's Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to you from the hot lead zone and what you're looking at is a army photograph. That's a US Army photograph. So uh, it's for all of us to look at. And what you're looking at is the Long Tom Cannon of the US Army. 155 millimeter gun and they called them the Long Toms used in World War II and Korea to good effect, could fire a 100-pound, 6-inch shell up to 22 miles. And you see right there is one of the troopers uh, getting ready to load the gun with a powder bag. And different sized powder bags allowed the different ranges. So you hope they don't get the powder bag mixed up and put a smaller one in and get a short round that might fall on our own troops. That didn't happen very often. So what does that have to do with our sports shooting today? So it turns out that we have long tom ammo also. And what a long tom ammo is, it's any of our brass casings that are straight wall and longer than standard. Such as, this is the 458 Winchester Magnum, a long tom. And then we have the very popular 4570, and then you see here a 460 Smith and Wesson, and even the 327 Federal is a long tom because it's longer than the 32 H and R Magnum. Now others that you don't see here are rounds such as the 357 Maximum, which is a longer than 357 case, the 444 Marlin which is a very popular straight wall long tom. Then we have the 445 Super Mag, which is a super long 44 Magnum. And then we have, of course, the 500 Smith & Wesson. And there are others, but those are some of the more popular ones that you'll run into. Now, we can't do reloading videos on YouTube anymore, but we can sure comment on some loading procedures. And so, what we're going to talk about in this video is what are some considerations we need to be careful of when we're working with our long tom cases? Well, the first consideration is case alignment. Because with our long tom cases, if your case is not perfectly aligned with the shell holder and the die, say the resizing die, then what happens is the case mouth deflects a little bit entering the die and then as you resize the case that misalignment of the die and case causes a certain kind of signal at the case head. So that might not show up on shorter rounds but on the longer long toms it'll show up as a little mark on the head. If you get that and you gotta really look at the alignment issues that your press may be suffering from. Now number two is case crumpling during bullet seating. And this can happen to a very slight degree with other rounds like 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum and all of that kind of thing where the little bulges are very minor. But with our long tom cases we can get severe case crumpling as you see here or moderate case crumpling as you see here or slight case crumpling as you see here or it can be very slight crumpling even below the base of the bullet as you see there. Now obviously we don't want to have case crumpling on our long tom cases or any of our cases really. So what are the causes of case crumpling? So the case crumpling, the case crumpling happens during bullet seating but the cause goes back to our neck expander die. If the neck expander die is not properly balanced for the neck tension we want we can have problems with case crumpling that really shows up in the long tom cases. So of course we want 0.002 inches of 
neck tension. What that means is we want the inside diameter to be 0.002 inches smaller than the bullet we're seating and that will give us the neck tension that we want. Well, if the neck expander is not giving us that, suppose it's causing even more neck tension, real heavy neck tension, then that will give problems seating which will cause stress on the cartridge case as the bullet's being seated. So that's the internal diameter that's a problem. Now the other dimension of case neck expansion that we don't think about very often is how long is our expander plug because it needs to be long enough to handle the long tom bullets that we often see in these long tom cases. If our neck expansion is not far enough into the case then when the long bullet is seated it hits the section that's not expanded and that results in a lot of stress on the case when the bullet is being seated and could lead to crumpling. Now if the resizing die and the neck expanding die is not balanced that itself the force of the plug going into the case could cause pre-crumpling in the case which will then show up during bullet seating. So to prevent that from being a problem we may have to go ahead and use a little bit of lube inside the case neck to reduce that amount of stress. And if we do need to do that then we've got to remove it before we go on with our processes of reloading. Now when it comes to seating the bullet of course if the bullet is oversized that will lead to our case crumpling in the long tom brass. So you want to use the bullet that's the right size. Also the right hardness. If we're seating bullets that are really hard then that will cause more stress in our cases and could lead to long tom case crumpling. So during bullet seating anything that causes tightness or vertical stress as the bullets being seated if there's any compression of the brass in this direction that can cause the case neck crumpling or the case body crumpling that we don't want. And then finally in the crimping procedure if you're doing a roll crimp which a lot of these rimmed long tom cartridges are requiring when we do the roll crimp as the case hits the, the shoulder that causes the roll crimp and starts to roll that in there's also a vertical compression of the brass as the crimp is being delivered. If there's any seating being done at all while the crimping is happening we've got problems with vertical compression of the brass that oftentimes will cause case crumpling. If you're crimping into our popular grooveless bullets today with powder coated bullets the problem there is without a crimping groove there's stress from the crimping that could go on to cause the crumpling. And of course if we apply too heavy a crimp that will cause case crumpling. Now the third problem consideration that we have is that on a lot of our loads we're looking at not using the entire case volume that's in these long tom cases. And so that brings up the issue of case fill versus case capacity. How well are we filling up that case capacity? And a lot of shooters like to go ahead and put in fillers. And when you think about fillers that opens up all kinds of considerations and even problems. Now you'll notice that in all of our reloading manuals you will find very 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 few loads that recommend the use of fillers. And when you hear about the fillers it doesn't say much about what kind of filler you should use. And there's questions about do you just put a little bit of filler in there to hold the powder against the primer? Or do you use enough filler to fill the entire empty case volume that uh, there's no powder? So you need to put in a lot of filler. And then there's the type of filler. Do you use uh, the fiber fill, the Dacron? Do you use toilet paper? Do you use cotton balls? All kinds of things have been tried as fillers even such as oatmeal and cream of wheat 
and of that kind of thing, who knows, you're adding a lot of payload to the bullet by adding solid fillers like that. And I just don't want to have that in my cartridge cases. In all the reloading manuals I've seen, I think I've only seen a couple of loads that recommend fillers. And it did not specify exactly what kind of filler. And it didn't talk about how to use the filler. Do you tamp it in tight? Do you put it in fluffy? You want it to hold? Do you use wads in there? All of these fillers basically are black powder thinking. Because with black powder, you can't have any air space. But progressive is totally different. Many, many of our loads have some air space. There's a safety issue with fillers. You don't want anything that will cause a barrel obstruction. There are even some shooters that have tried to use the buffer, the little polyethylene buffer compounds that are used in shot shell loading. But that wasn't used for powder, it was used for the shot. Staying with the loading manual recommendations, the published loading data is always our best policy. And for that reason, I've experimented with fillers, but I've abandoned the use of them because of all the variables and the testing hasn't really shown consistent, better accuracy improvement by the use of fillers. So I don't use the fillers, and instead I use what the industry has provided for us, and that is Trail Boss Powder by Hodgden. The industry created this powder because of the safety issues involved in loading small amounts of powder in relatively big powder spaces. So with Trail Boss, we don't even need to consider fillers anymore because this will fill the case very nicely, leaving little air gap and give us the good combustion. We don't have to worry about powder against the primer, any of this kind of thing so that we've got good powder for our reduced loadings and safe. So basically all long tom shooters need to go ahead and have some trail boss on hand. It's a great powder. So with these considerations of case alignment, case crumpling, and case fill, the long tom cartridges can be loaded with complete satisfaction for us to take care of light loadings, moderate loadings, and heavy loadings of our long tom cartridges. They really are a joy to shoot. We'll see you next video. Bye for now.